G'day Ziggy D here. Now I've had a ton of requests to share and go over my new Ethereal Knives Scion build for Nemesis League that I've been leveling up with Willy Wonka and his crew. So uh, I've been playing for quite a few hours today, been up since 2.30am, but it's like uh, it's the early afternoon now. I'm still planning on going a little bit more tonight, but uh, so far it's been really good. Even though we did have one unfortunate incident, but uh, we're, we're back on the horse and I've, after having leveled this build twice, now, beyond 30, I can say that the early leveling portion of this build, at least, is very strong. I also think it has a lot of endgame potential. We actually planned this build out live uh, on my live stream, yeah, uh, yesterday. And uh, the only reason we were able to do that was because if there's, any, there's only one thing I can stream, and that's a web browser. I certainly can't stream any games because my internet can't handle that. Australian internet. But we were able to do that, and I had about four to 500 of you guys drop in and help me plan out this build and talk about the new passive tree. So that was pretty exciting and pretty awesome. And we ended up coming up with this pretty rad build that I think is going to be pretty interesting. Most importantly, it takes advantage of a lot of the new additions into the game, namely Scion, the Mind Over Matter node, and Avatar of Fire. Yeah, that's right. We get all three of the new cool things on the passive tree, which I'm sure a lot of you guys will be very happy about because I'm sure plenty of you guys want to see how to use these new keystones and use the new class. So, the essential, the base ideas for this build was to create a scion that scales EK through fire damage, so ethereal knives through fire damage, because it's very hard to scale ethereal knives normally as a, just as a, a physical spell. It's kind of a weird spell, but converting it to fire allows us to do some pretty cool stuff with it, and, and also just to uh, scale its damage by quite a bit. And we can also get some like cool burn crits and things like that from it. So quite a few cool things we can do with that, but it also is just a fun way, I think, to use Avatar of Fire. Next up, we use the combination of Mind Over Matter, which could, uh, when hit, 30% of damage taken goes to mana before life, and the uh, Eldritch battery, battery Keystone, which gives us a ton more mana by converting our Energy Shield to mana. So with this, we use like an Energy Shield, uh, actual shield, offhand shield, and maybe a few pieces of Energy Shield gear, along with a few select nodes, uh, and we're able to uh, get a ton of extra mana from that. Now this build all up has around 200% life nodes, which is about on par with what most people planned out hardcore builds to be, 200 to 220% life. And this is indeed a hardcore build planned out for the Nemesis League. Now that, although although that's on the, you know, the lower, sort of the minimum of what a lot of people uh, plan for, we have increased base life now. And the fact that I'm using uh, Mind Over Matter means that my mana pool is actually HP as well. So I think we have well over to 230, 240, maybe even 250% life, but uh, I'm not quite sure how how well the mana shield thing will work out yet until actually testing it. We also use Iron Reflexes, which allows us to use a wider variety of gear, and also just to benefit from the things like Grace, if we can run that, and uh, just be able to use Evasion. It's only two points away, and it's a very nice defensive node to get. So we get that, we have big, lots of life, lots of defensive stats from our mana, and uh, lots of damage from EK. So. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. I think it turned out pretty interesting. But let's go through how we actually, uh, the, the important parts of this build, why it's planned out the way it is, and how you go about navigating the tree while leveling. And uh, I probably will come back and do some leveling recaps of this build, talk a bit about how I leveled to each spot, and you guys can follow along with that if you're interested in playing this build yourself. But uh, let's just talk about, you know, the plans for now, how we're going for now. Now, the first thing I want to say is there's something I might do while leveling. I might get this mana regeneration node, and these three cast speed nodes here. EK, when used early in the game, has a very slow cast speed, especially if you don't have faster casting yet. And there's also some mana problems in normal, in about normal difficulty, so from 0 to 30. So the mana regeneration there could help. But this is just a maybe, a maybe. But uh, overall, generally we use from 0 to 30, uh, we use Spectral Throw as our main leveling skill, and we switch over to EK once EK starts to outscale Spectral Throw. And uh, once we start getting a lot of extra mana and stuff like that to be able to support EK, which is a bit more expensive. Spectral Throw is very cheap and very effective if you just can get a good two-handed weapon. So that's what I've done, leveling the second... The first time I leveled, I tried around with... I played around with uh, Frost po uh, Freezing Pulse, which was decent, but not great. And I used EK in a, a bit as well. I uh, switched over to that a little bit early. But uh, this time around, I'm leveling with Spectral Throw, and I switched over to EK towards the end of normal, and that worked out really, really well. It was really smooth. So Spectral Throw is excellent, and all of the stuff we get scales well with Spectral Throw as well. So we come down through the projectile damage here. This all, this all supports EK as it's a projectile spell. Uh, we go through here, and then we go straight into these life nodes here. So after about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 levels, 
we get a ton of life. Look, there's, these are all 8% nodes and one 12% node here. Now we also get Path of the Warrior, which gives us increased physical damage, maximum life, and extra strength as well. Now, this build has 200 base strength from the passive tree, and we can also get a bit more from gear. And that's going to help us scale EK more as well, because we'll end up using the Iron Will support gem which gives us increased physical damage. Now physical damage does indeed uh, scale with the fire damage because it, it counts the physical damage increases first and then turn, converts that to fire and then scales the fire. So you get all the full effectiveness of all those things. So that's pretty nice. So we come down here, we go up through here, and now we're, now we're making a beeline essentially straight towards Eldritch Battery. However, as you can see, it's not exactly a straight line to Eldritch Battery. Battery. It's kind of a big loop around the passive tree. But this actually works out really nicely, because what we do, we're down through here, so this takes a few levels. But then, when we're starting to feel like, oh, we really need a little bit more defensive stats, we get this cluster of life nodes here. In fact, I probably just tend to take Athleticism here, and then wait for a little while. Then we head up the node, we don't get Avatar of Fire until the added fire support gem has leveled up enough to put this over or around the 100% mark, till we can start to scale it really well. We head up in here, we come down and get Holy Strength, which also gives buff effect as well now, which is pretty nice. So we get extra life from there. Then we come up here and grab these life nodes here. Purity of Flesh, this cluster is insane. It is hugely, hugely powerful. 18% maximum life and Chaos Resist. And Chaos Resist and life on here, and life on here as well. So fantastic stuff. Then what we do is we come down just to here, head around, and we go straight to Eldritch Battery. So that's the plan there. From that point onwards, we'll probably start to branch out a little bit. We'll probably pick up some armor and energy shield. Maybe we'll head into the Templar start area. But we're probably, uh, pretty soon after getting Eldritch Battery, we're going to be heading down to the mana, sh the mana Shield node, or the Mind Aver Matter node. So pretty much, once straight away, once we get Eldritch Battery, if we feel like we need some more defensive stats, we can like get some really immediate ones here. Or we can start heading in towards here. But I think we'll probably beeline straight for Mind Over Matter and also pick up Iron Reflexes in, you know, at the same time there. And that's going to give us a big defensive buff. Then we can essentially start filling out the tree, getting all of the extra little bits and picking up Avatar of Fire once we're able to start scaling that. Towards the end, sort of end game, level 80, that sort of area, we'll start to pick up these reduced mana aura reservation nodes here so we can support, hopefully, I'm hoping to support two to three good auras, but uh, we'll see how that works out. Need to test that out a little, a little bit. And we can also get these energy shield nodes here from our shield, which is going to be our biggest source of mana at end game. And we can, of course, come down here, get inner force, get these life and mana nodes, get all that good jazz, get these fire damage nodes, start scaling that stuff. Pretty exciting. I'm pretty excited to keep playing this build. So far, it's playing really well, leveling really well. I think it's going to be quite a lot of fun. Anyway, I'll keep you guys posted on how it goes, and uh, let me know if you're following along or if you're uh, enjoying this build as well. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.